Welcome to the podcast. We talk about all the things that are hidden in the shadows. This is Isaac. And on this bonus episode, we are doing the paranormal roundtables one more time. Or again, probably never going to stop this as long as we can. I am joined by uh, Mike from Shadow Walker Paranormal, my paranormal team. So we already know each other pretty well. Uh, Josh from Cold Spot. Uh, from Cold Spot, Cold Spot Paranormal. paranormal Reason. There we go. Yeah. Uh, we got the Keeper of the Second and PETA from Eternal Sisters Paranormal. How's yeah. everybody doing? Ethereal. I'm never gonna say it right. <laughs> I know no one ever does. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good. Doing great. Hi. I know I just I got <laughs> work myself doing uh killing bugs. So but oh, that sounds creepy. <laughs> the reason why we started or me and me and Megan wanted to start these paranormal round tables with discussing from different people wrong in the immense paranormal community is for that to spread our knowledge and what other people have with the paranormal community all together. Different perspectives from psychics to not people who are psychic when it comes to paranormal investigating all together, when dealing with spirits from good to bad and how we, we, we deal with that. So that's kind of why we started this whole paranormal roundtable thing anyway, is to get different perspectives and discuss our point of views or at least how we've dealt with things in the paranormal. But like I said before, this is less of an interview, is more of a conversation. So... First question, I know if anyone's ever watched the previous ones or listened to them, people recognize PETA, people recognize Mike from the other Paranormal Roundtables we've done before. But new to this is Josh and uh, I'm sure call you Keeps for short. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the Paranormal Roundtable thing. So uh, don't feel like your odd man's out because, of course, uh, us, PETA and Mike already know each other from previous times we worked together. But I want everyone to talk about this because it might be somebody's first time listening to this or watching this. So let's go around and give a small, I guess, description about who you are and your team that you represent. Had a very negative experience when I was 15. So I think throughout my life, I just, uh, you know, always kind of wondered, like, what was it? Where did it come from? Why was, you know, why was I the only one affected? Um things like that. So once I kind of retired from doing my veterinary work, I, you know, thought, hey, you know, I might might get into this. So I conned my uh, best friend, uh, Sean, who uh, unfortunately isn't investigating anymore. But, um, yeah, I conned her into uh, starting it with me. And, you know, we spent many hours trying to figure out names and came up with a theory of just paranormal. And yeah, been been doing it ever since. And I love it. Awesome. Uh keeps. <laughs> yeah. We got you into uh paranormal, at least to earn the title Keeper of the Second. The name Keeper of Sagi. I at a time I was going through some rough paths and with my life and my good friend, she brought me into the whole urban community, the whole urbex community of like sporting band buildings and stuff. She uh she brought me into it. She gave me the name because she saw that I enjoyed every second, every moment. Like everything was just to my, to, I guess, to my enjoyment of the time exploring. A few years later down the line, she gave me a list of what she wanted to do, wanted to explore. And sadly, she passed away that following year. And I was still continue doing it. Uh, seven years later, I'm still, still exploring, still doing all that fun stuff. Uh, throughout the past seven years, four years ago, I met my good friend, Colin Brown, uh, the host, the owner of the Paranormal Bubs. He's been doing this, I do believe, 2015. He, he has the name, the Paranormal Files. He's been doing the Paranormal longer than I have. But once our paths met at that point, where he, uh, I guess, where we met, I just... I guess it just lit that fire, that whole paranormal. Like I've had somewhat explained experience, unexplained experiences before meeting him. But once I met him, he and I work, he's, he and I've been working for the past four years together. Uh, when they used to, when he used to live here in Texas, exploring, doing the whole paranormal exploration and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Josh. So I have. Probably the strangest intro into the paranormal. Um, I grew up Catholic, and I remember when I was six years old, sitting in uh, first communion class, right, and 
our teachers like, hey, you know what? There are evil spirits in this world. You can't see them, but you know, animals can. And if you ever see one, you're going to die. And so, yeah, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> so I grew up terrified of uh, ghosts and spirits and all of this stuff. And then my, uh, my lovely wife convinced me to go on our first paranormal investigation about five years ago. Yeah, five, five and a half years ago. And we, we did our first paranormal investigation. And it was like, you know what? This was awesome. It wasn't as bad as the mind makes it out to be. And so we ended up starting our team and we've kind of been hitting the ground running ever since. And why uh, cold spot paranormal was just something you thought of or some meaning behind it. Um, so we actually started out, my wife and I, when we were trying to figure out a name, we used some of those random like paranormal team generator name generators. <laughs> and we're like, Hey, you know, cold spot sounds pretty cool. Um, and then we kind of came up with cold spot on the heart. So we figured, you know, you had the cold spot. And then, you know, we love the paranormal. So we came up with cold spot of the heart. Um, but a couple of years ago, we ended up bringing on new members and kind of forming a podcast and, and whole new team aspect of it. So it was just her and I before. And so we came up with the name cold spot paranormal research. But if you look at the, in the initials, it's DPR for sure. So it still kind of sticks with the heart aspect of things. And we just kind of grew with our naming. You know, been running with it. I could. I. I thought it was like you know, you you walk up, you feel the cold spot. Like, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and that definitely does play in the paranormal, right? And so we've got to use it without names. You know? well, I actually really like that name. That's that's a cool cool name for a for a team. Yep. That's um. Yeah, I I actually yep. forgot to because you know I I do have like uh, migraine meds on board, so I'm a bit like space cadetty. Um, but yeah, uh, I've got Jen. Um, she's my paranormal partner in crime, and then I've got Adam, who's a skeptical believer. So that's that kind of brings a really good dynamic to our team. Um, and we've just had a couple uh, of young people join. So, yeah, now there's five of us. Um, lots of training ahead. <laughs> and the man I know all too well, uh, Mike. A um, uh, brief history. You know, I had a hard life always in foster care and stuff like that. Had all kinds of experiences with all kinds of religions that are at a young age. but. You know, I was always the one to question, you know, you were talking about Catholics and stuff like that. You, you, me and we fought all the time because, you know, it all contradicts itself. And at a certain point, you realize that religion is a man's construct, you know, spirituality, something different. Um, but what happened was, is I had passed away from stomach cancer, um, went septic, passed away. And when I came back out of the hospital, I thought I was going crazy. Cause I was hearing and seeing and things were moving in my peripheral and, um, you know, it was like a whirlwind from there joined a paranormal team, uh, that didn't work out. They just had a different way of doing things. Um, and then met Isaac through them and then started hanging out with Isaac and we started shadow Walker paranormal. So, and I'm not crazy by the way, <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> I know it's on the other side now. So, but. It's been a, it's been an awesome journey, you know, being able to show people you know, there is something after the effect, you know what I mean? When you pass away, there is something there. I've been there, you know, it's, it, I, it's good to be able to show people that there is something there. So that's why I do it and to help too, because a lot of these things are kind of negative sometimes. And if you can help cross them over, cross them over. Uh, and I know it doesn't, you know, it goes against paranormal investigating because you want them to be there to investigate but if you can make them pass over or let them pass over or give them a chance to you know kind of clean up that energy a little bit that's what we kind of go for hey, can i ask you a question mike yes ma'am um do you uh, have any recollection of what it was like on the other side like did you know that you no. died in on this so the first time, not really, it was like a bunch of flashes. That's when I started seeing things um, and hearing voices. But 
um, it's been five major surgeries um, being cut up from my sternum down um, to, you know, below my belly button. And then, uh, so I've, I've actually passed away three times in the last three years that I can actually remember what happened. I can remember seeing what was going on. And I freaked my nurses out because I was telling them what happened to me. And there was like, there's no way you knew that because they gave me a shock inside my, my chest. They, they reached in with a little bow and I was able to tell them, you know, what color they were, um, you know, what voltage they were on and all that. So, you know, I did experience seeing that. And then the last time it was more of a spiritual thing because I was talking to people, um, past relatives, ancestor, bloodline. Um, and there was something angelic about that, um, that really, uh, made me kind of step back and realize that I had to change my life and everybody around me had to realize that we're not guaranteed anything. It's real short, you know, uh, cool. time is a construct. And if you go by that construct, you ain't got much. You could, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You know what I mean? Cool. So it, it was a good eye opener. And uh, I've become very spiritual since then, you know, because my it was, religion was always forced on me. So I was the rebellion kind, you know what I mean? So cool. to be spiritual now is like a blood thing. Wow, that's incredible. And um, um, how strong you are too, um, having gone through that three times, my goodness. Yeah, it, it was, it, it's, it, that's why I want to show everybody it's there. You know, we, we leave our energy behind when we go or we get stuck here. You know, unfortunately we get stuck here. I would hate for anybody to get stuck here. But some of us do, and some of us have things to take care of. But uh, that's why I do it. That's why I love it, to be able to show people, you know, this isn't our only life. <laughs> we've been here. We've done this many times over. You just, not everybody can tap into that. Um, well, that's what makes, I guess, our paranormal team different um, when it comes to different paranormal teams out there. And one thing I guess don't feel yourself classified as I'm not saying you are, but what I've learned from talking to different paranormal uh, investigators and so forth like that, when it comes to paranormal, that there's three kinds of paranormal teams out there right now. First being your typical clout chasers. Uh, they only do this for the fame. They only do this to get likes or follows or views or however they want. They want to be the next ghost adventures, the next ghost hunters, that, that level of, uh, of fame and out, uh, basically uh, exploiting the paranormal when it comes together. Those are the cloud chasers. And then there's a second class. Paranormal investigators will film what they do, but they have respect for the dead. They communicate with the dead. They try to talk to them, try to understand why are you still here and stuff like that. They respect who died and who, you know, the aspects of where they are investigating and stuff like that. They still film. They still want to capture evidence because they want to show people that this stuff exists, but in the right ways. And then there's a third kind, which is me and Mike's team. Um, that's only mission. Our only mission is to go to location to location, place to place, take out all the dark entities possible and help all the light spirits that want to cross, cross over. And we never force anybody to leave. And investigations that me and Mike have done so far, we've never forced anybody. Well, we forced can. the dark ones. <laughs> we took the dark ones away from the place. But as for light spirits, regular human spirits and ghosts like we that, their choice. Yeah, it's their choice. We leave it up to them oh. most of the time. A lot have chosen to stay at some of the locations we've been to. Some have chosen. Hey, I, I kind of like it here now. You took away the big bully. I kind of want to stay here. Um, yeah. And then some choose to go because they're, oh, finally free. Thank you for taking that person away. Now I can actually go, um, which we've experienced a couple of places we've been to before. But from my experience, those are the three kinds of paranormal teams so far that I've encountered. Well, two mainly that I've encountered the most, but then of course, the third being uh, my team. And so far, I don't think there's a lot of teams out there that, let's say, share our perspective, but uh, or at least can do oh. what we do. But um, but that's where the whole Shadow Walker paranormal came from, uh, is essentially my ability that Peta's friend, uh, Jane, actually uh, gave me. <laughs> she was the one that actually coined the phrase for me and stuff like that. But um, I've earned other titles from then. But no title more like Keeper of the Second. That, I would say, is the first one that I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> but Appreciate it. 
yeah that's that's i mean I've, i have a few but that's that's a good one um what essentially i mean you guys always give a little bit of why you got into investigating but what i guess pushed the the urge to investigate or like keeper uh you know urban explore places that could potentially have spirits and stuff like that and get into the paranormal community altogether mm-hmm. i mean for me i've 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 had my runs with unexplained things happening to me it was me uh my original crew uh me millie the one who brought me into it and her crew it was all of us we were in a abandoned factory one of those giant rooms maybe two three football fields and we were like dead center and we were walking walking and talking and we see this older gentleman behind us walking Behind, behind us and calling us out be like hey come here and we're like okay cool whatever you know we got caught we either they're going to ask us to get off the property or be they're going to he's probably going to walk us out to the cops and we're going to get a trespassing fine um so we meet up the man halfway and this man is older gentleman older gentleman white like white hair glasses like this maybe five seven five eight tall and he was professionally what decent and we were just chit-chatting with him stuff like that and it, you know five ten minutes to go down and we're still talking to the man he's telling us certain things what this man mm-hmm. will do and after that he's like all right be all be safe y'all go have fun and stuff we're walking one way he walks the other way we're like it's kind of odd and we all look behind us. Man's completely gone. Man's like, just, and man's completely gone. And we're like, we just had it. We were, I still today can't even believe it. But doing my research after we went, we all went home, found out this man was the, the owner of the factory and how he died. He was on one of the uh, catwalks and he's, he flipped over the railing. And his whole body got shredded in one of the gears. Oh, so, my God. So, horrible. That, so that kind of like, that was Thank like you. part of it. Part of the thing of the whole paranormal. I feel like that was the start of it. But, and I just kept going, doing my own thing for a few years. And then met Colin from the paranormal files and then just came back. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's get down and dirty for real and see what happens you know main coming to get into <laughs> intros that's yeah that's, that's a good one <laughs> obviously he he looks like very corporeal then like a real person yeah he, we thought we were getting in trouble we legit thought this was security no but <laughs> uh, now he was the owner of the whole place guess he wanted to talk to somebody Hasn't talked to anybody for years, so place was abandoned for like forty plus years. So yeah, unexpected death. It holds a lot of energy. Definitely. Oh, where uh, Josh is at right now, I very active there. Yeah, but it's you're you're crowded. I yeah, it's funny because I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I can imagine the, the last time I investigated this building that we're at, uh, I'm sitting at a table and it's a very solid, steady table. And my wife and I were in here. Uh, it's a place called Benson Grist Mill in Stansbury, Utah. So, yeah, it's an old, uh, there was an old grist mill here. And they eventually, like, it went under, it went into ruin. And the owners who bought the property ended up restoring the mill. And then they moved a bunch of like other pioneer cabins and and other projects onto this property. And so this is one of those cabins that was brought onto the property. It was owned by a man by the name of Eric Pierce. This is his house. He built this cabin. It's not very big, maybe uh, 10 by 10. So it's really tiny, but this is his house. This is where he lived. Yeah. But we were, we were in here investigating. We had, we were just doing like a dowsing rod. Or sorry, we weren't doing downstairs. We were just doing need to section. And all of our, both of our hands were on, you know, above the table. And from underneath the table, there was a knock. 
and it's like, well, that's really cool. You know, it's pitch black. And they're like, hey, if that was you, do it again. And then, you know, four or five seconds later, knock. And we, so we end up, cool. yeah, it was so cool. Uh, we found out it was a little kid that did it, like like six year old little boy or, or you know, six year old little girl. That's what I was going to say. Curiosity. I, there's a lot of curiosity. Like, yeah, they they're almost loving that you're there, kind of stuff. They, they're yeah. getting somebody's attention. And that, that there's several kids that are here, and they love hanging out. They oh, love. Going to say here. that. Yeah, like and, I'm like picking up male and female boy and girls. Yeah, 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 yep, yep. Smaller. And this place gets investigated a lot. There's probably I don't know thirty to forty investigations a year at this mill, and so everybody, you know, comes out and investigates because it's very it's very calm, it's very quiet. There's not a lot of negative energy here. There's only yep. two of them, and they they stick to very uh, secluded spots. Um, so but I think they're more what you're it's older than the settlers uh, that ties to the land. Well, yeah. Yeah. You, you have some land issues going on there. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very, like the Paiute Indians use this land uh, quite a bit before the, the pioneers, the, the Mormon pioneers came over and settled this area. It's very native. Um, indigenous people wise first and then the the Mormon pioneers used this land and now it's just a it's the state park what it is yeah and you got to remember too they were being pushed out at the time too so the more that we pushed yeah. that way the more the Indians got pushed that way too you know what I mean so yeah yeah and the the Paiute were pushed over the mountains uh over the Wasatch Mountains under the west side which uh there's not a lot out there <laughs> It's salt flat. It's awful. It's awful territory. Yeah. yeah. I guess something it's I forgot really to bad. forgot to mention. Uh, if anyone's clueless, what the hell's going on? Um, both Mike and Peta are, are psychics in our little round table here. Um, so it, if they get any messages or they're channeling or they feel anything, it's because something's going on. So and then of course Josh being at a haunted location right now uh, doesn't help that process. So um, <laughs> no. doesn't hurt it though. Yeah, it doesn't hurt either. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. I thought I saw a face in the window behind you. Mm, that's possible. There's no way it's a person, though. Uh, there's about eight inches of room between uh, this cabin and it's an old uh, like RV camp camper thing that's behind me. It's used for storage now, mm. but yeah. So there's yeah. no way that if there was a face back there, there's no way it's human or at least yeah. a living individual I should say i'd have to go back to the footage to find that but if there is we'll point yeah it makes a it. Circle, <laughs> circle thing um but yeah, that's 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 interesting yeah um over his shoulder now <laughs> <laughs> something yeah something i forgot to say um beforehand i think i've mentioned a couple of times peter and mike already know but uh things um uh, that are paranormal ghost wise that you're at your place with can transfer to our place and for vice versa anything that's here can go to there anything that's your place can come here um and that's all around it doesn't really matter um and peter knows all too well what i can do with situations that call for bad things to happen but uh so far no, nothing bad has shown up so we're all good um oh well that's yeah. reassuring <laughs> With a seven minute delay that one night I was trying to help her and there was like a seven minute delay from my comments to when she got them. So, oh yeah. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That live investigation I did with you uh, about a year ago. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I was trying to read the spot like I am with Josh right now. Um, oh. And keep her. Yeah. Keep you, you, you got some things floating around you too. I don't know if you know that, but. I, your, I've, I've, your heart chakra is way out of balance right now. Your your heart chakra is way out of balance right now. That that's a first. I, I I've had a lot of people. I've I've done my I my last location that I did was in Kansas at, at one of what I've got to explore with a paranormal investigator up there in Kansas at one of the uh, demonic theaters 
And um, I, I spent two and a half, three nights there with the whole team. We slept in there. We did everything in there. And I, what they said to me was like, I only remember bits and pieces of it because of what happened that night. Like everything just, I don't know what happened. Like, so I haven't even edited that footage and that's been almost two years. Wow. So I'm like, I saw him. I'm, yeah, it's, that's why I kind of like come more, somewhat stayed away from the panel, but I'm slowly creeping back in. Uh, but I'm just, I'm back into the baby steps again. You know how to protect yourself, yeah, right? Not, right? Yeah. I, I, I have, I have some good friends who do the whole dark witchcraft, the good dick witchcraft. I have multiple people who have helped me throughout this whole situation. And I, you know, it's, it's, it's helped me a lot. Like it, if you met me last year it was up and down, it was a roller coaster. It was, it was it. You cleansed yourself with sage that, recently. Isaac, I don't know if you can see that, but that's what I got from him. Oh, is that what you just drew? Yeah. That was around him? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, can you see that Keith? Have you ever, yeah. I, I, now you, you've seen this. So this come across you as I, a, I, a shadow person. You say, um, you've been somewhere with somebody was that they, he kept peeking at you. Like you got, did you get evidence of somebody peeking around a corner or something? That could have been your, I used to work for, um, I used to help out around the, the most haunted hospital here in Texas, Yorktown Memorial Hospital. Um, um, I used to work for them for them. They gave me the opportunity because I do my photography work in abandoned buildings. So they gave me the opportunity to work, um, to my work in there with me and my buddy. We had the whole, um, whole hospital to ourselves. Front doors were locked. I mean, she took this picture and she was like, we we're the only two. And I'm like, yeah, we're the only two. What's, what's up? So it is. So she took the shot. I'm here. She's here side by side. She took the shot down the hallway and there's like an intersection. This is what she caught. And this was like four or three years ago. So like an actual, <laughs> an actual shadow person. Yeah. That was a shadow person. Um, but I mean, it was going back to that picture that you drew that I didn't remember that figure, that face that was from, that was from the, the theater. Oh, really? Uh, I think it was from, I think it was, I think it was from the theater. I, I want to say so. Cause I mean, that, that was like the most dark investigation out of what, five years I've done the paranormal. It makes sense. It makes sense. That's why I asked him, make sure you're protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. I feel like Josh is very spiritually sound. You know what I mean? Well, I mean definitely try to stay protected. We've gone into some pretty nasty places. So we, yeah. we, we yeah. and I'm about to go again. <laughs> uh, I'm about to do another road trip. So I'm about to go back. Just make sure you're protecting yourself. Okay. Uh, funny enough, Appreciate you it. bring that up, Mike, because uh, I just told you what a couple months ago. Uh, <laughs> when I said that you have nothing to worry about when it comes to dark things around here, uh, I, I think I explained to Josh a little bit beforehand. Keeps your point. Haven't heard about this. Peter knows all too well. So does Mike. Um, I have an innate ability to pull um, dark entities off the plane. Um, and I do so with my hands, right? The energy I can feel with my hands and I pull the energy into my hand, almost like it's all of it at one time. And then I could transfer it to an object. An object I've been using for the last year and a half now is a ring. Uh, to be specific, a King Solomon ring. Replica, anyway. Not the real one. You can imagine who. But He was trying to hold him in his cell, and we had to give him something. Ooh. Well, I, I filter it. Anyway, but that's, that's a different story. Um, but my ability allows me to pull things also from anywhere I can physically see. So if something was at Peter's place or Josh's place or Mike's place or even yours, I can pull that and take it here. And people who listen to podcasts know Shadow Walker episodes one through three explain all my abilities all together. But um, about 10 minutes ago, I pulled something from you, from your side. 
which might have been that. Mike's side or mine? Your side, which might have been what Mike just showed you. It was relatively strong. I would have to go into the ring to uh, confirm whether what it was or what not. But um, yeah, it whatever was around you at the moment that the mic drew, I took it away. And Peter's probably going there now to look. <laughs> <laughs> if you close your eyes, like you think you're channeling in. Um, yeah. So I don't you think know. that thing you necessarily have to worry about anymore. I don't know if Mike still feels. I know. Like I know. Who knows? He, I know. There's there's a couple more. <laughs> He's but, uh, I'm sorry. I keep seeing um, a lady with plait, a lady with plaits, like plaited hair, like two, like long plaits. Yeah, I I don't know. I I know I know what you're talking about. That that's probably uh, that's probably Millie. She usually hangs out with me, so she has some like you know. I kind of feel like this might be something. We don't want to do on the podcast. No, I, I feel like this is probably more personal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So maybe yeah. after afterwards, I we can talk you. about this. Yeah, I feel yeah. you. I feel you. I, I, that's why I said something. I can feel you. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, uh, Isaac, yeah. <laughs> um, how, how do you, uh, you know, like when you're like pulling away, like, you know, dark and, and light energies at locations, how do does the location feel about that or do you not tell them <laughs> i mean of course they know but um i to be specific i never pull any light entities whatsoever humans spirits good spirits i never take off the plane i kind of leave them to their devices megan and mike always communicate with them about if they want to cross over or not um sometimes to choose a say oh. sometimes they 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 need a little help and oh, that's where megan and mike come in to help do that but no so far we have seen consistent gratitude for taking yes. away dark entities off the plane. Uh, the last investigation we did was at Patsy's Pond, uh, a place here close by that was original settlers uh, location. Um, I took away three entities that were uh, deceased witches, dark witches um, that, that stayed at the location to torment the dead that were still there. They used the dead that were there as uh, power ups and any normal sure. people that use the trails going there, they just, they like tormenting those people, especially anyone who hang there overnight. <coughs> but I took one, two, and a last one actually came over the uh, the spear box thing we were using. You could hear her laugh like, <laughs> like your typical like witch cackles, Ooh. right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And she got she charged me, and of course, like I've said a million times before, it couldn't. Uh, once I started pulling, it was it was that was the end because so far mm -hmm. nothing's been able to stop me. Um, but no, after that, a lot of spirits were thankful. Some crossed over, uh, many actually chose to stay, but the ones that chose to stay, we were, we haven't gone there back again, but I think both Mike and Megan got the feel that they were, some were slaves that were there previously and a lot were native Americans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is it deep ties to the, to the earth itself? The ones that want to be where they're at are comfortable where they're at. Yeah. And we don't ever make those people go. We're like, okay, if you want to stay, you can stay, but we cleared a place for you. Oh, you can't, you yeah. can't really take away residual either. That's that's an imprint. Yeah, yeah. When you're surrounding, and, and yeah, I mean, you can't you can't cross the spirit. I've well, this is you know what I've been you know read and been told, but you know the the spirit want you know has to be willing yeah. to to cross over. Um, sorry. Well, we, I mean, I guess this is a subject we talk about right now <laughs> is that the spirits that we, we come across, um, a lot of them choose to stay. And I guess from real experiences, I guess we want to go around and talk about the idea of uh, why we feel some spirits choose to stay. By my own experience, and I think Mike has come across it too, probably has his own perspective. I uh, hate talking for you, <laughs> but we worked together for so long. I like, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> but my perspective so far from my time investigating is a lot of them have unfinished business. And that's what the old terminology oh. that I've been using for years is unfinished oh. business, a reason to stay behind. But that was before I started doing what I do. And after I started doing what I do, I figured out that a lot of them, some most locations we've been to, especially if there's anything dark there, are stuck there because those dark entities are keeping those people there. 
um, and they can't leave. They want to, but they can't. They they're they're stuck there because uh, the dark entities are using or bullying the other spirits into staying there. Um, and so far, most places we've been to, it's been that kind of case. Now, I'm not saying that's everywhere, but I'm saying that's some of the places so far we have been to that has yeah. been that situation. Um, but spirits that come to our my house, literally, to Megan, and because Megan, of course, a co-host on Hidden Shadows, also very psychic, uh, they come to her to help them cross because they need her to communicate with someone who is still alive, like a friend, a family member, something that they didn't get to say while they were alive, but after they did, they didn't have a chance to tell oh. that person, and they need to for some reason whatsoever. But those are the, the essentially reasons we found so far why, or at least in my experience, why spirits tend to hang out. But I guess, you, what are your guys' perspectives on why you believe some spirits choose to stay behind? Well, I mean, I'm kind of, um, yeah, like... Uh... I agree with, you know, what you've said. Um, you know, we have got a um, really old pub to, like, tavern to investigate. And um, Jen and I went up there earlier this year and, and you know, like, the owner was, you know, a bit sceptical, uh, you know, especially, you know, with me, like, picking up different things. And, and so, you know, like... I, I pick up this this spirit, it's a male, and he's just sitting at this table and he's just waiting. And um, you know, the owner's there and she's just listening and and I said, Oh, um, I get the name Luke. Uh I get names a lot. Um, not all the time, but I do get them a lot. And so I decided to pull out, you know, a bit, you know, a few pieces of equipment and sure enough, like you know, our K2 starts spiking, um, you know, we captured some, like, really good EVPs and everything, but he was, had been waiting there. So he's basically just sitting there waiting because he got into uh, an altercation fight a very, very long time ago, and he's waiting for that person to come back so he can you know apologize for for what he did um so uh, yeah and I, I told him I said look you know he's 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 not coming back but yeah he's he's just he's still sitting there waiting so you know I agree uh 100% with with your theory and think that's unfinished business or Josh should be kind of quiet. You get a yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have, I mean, yeah, the unfinished business. That's pretty, uh, pretty a common thing that we've ran into. Well, but we we have a couple other theories too that we've ran into. Um, there's the belief of you know, as in life, as in death. So if you were a butthole in life, you're going to be a butthole in death. You're going to be a butthole somewhere. Uh, and you know, there's there's those of us who believe that across the veil, when you cross over, there's judgment. Right. And if you knew that you're going to be judged and you're not going to be judged well, uh, why would you go? Why would you cross over? Because you know what's waiting for you on their side and it's not going to be pleasant. So they're like, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to be a butthole here. It's like, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other thing we ran into as well is we ran into this lady, it was an older lady. Uh, we were at, it was a place called Lava Hot Springs Inn. It's a bed and breakfast now. It used to be the old Tawilla, not say not Tawilla. Um, I can't remember the name of the hospital. It used to be an old hospital. And then at one point in time, after it was a hospital, it became a geriatric center. And then uh, it went into disrepair, and then the new owners bought it and it turned it into a bed and breakfast. So it's up in Lava Hot Springs, Idaho. It's got all these wonderful hot springs out front, all this native energy. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. But we ran into this lady in the basement, and she was so mad at her family for putting her in the home that she just held on to this anger and this resentment well after her death. And we, we asked her, it's like, well, is there anyone living still that you have this anger towards? And she's like, no, I don't. There's nobody else to be angry with. I want to go. And so we ended up helping her cross over. 
at that point in time because it's like she's she was ready at that point. yeah yeah you know and so i don't know if that's quite that's not quite the unfinished business it's more like fight right it's more like you know i'll show you yeah. <laughs> i won't cross over i'll show you i'll just yeah. stick around well you gotta figure too that you know um on the other side there is no time so, right you know there is no it's been 40 some years it to them it's a blink of an eye you know what i mean so yeah it, it's a little different for them but um that's that's amazing that you guys did that and actually crossed them over yeah we've done that so my wife's done that before i've done it um and then we have someone on our team who does it oh who's much more talented at it and does it well um we had it was really cool. It was last year, uh, right around the turn of the, like right around, oh, probably right after Betty White died, I think is what it was. And we were staying in her house and my wife was doing Marco Polo. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Yeah. Um, but Marco. Yeah. So, Hello. yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually, it's, it, it's an app where you can do video messages to your friends and stuff. And oh. so, Oh, yeah. yeah, it's not the game. It's actually an app. Oh, okay. But what, yeah, but what was cool is she, she, my wife was Marco Poloing one of our uh, other teammates because they talk all the time, and there was an EVP that came through on the Marco Polo, and so we found out that we had four spirits in the house that had just shown up, and they came to our house to be crossed over. They sought us out. But we did this little EVP session. We did a, I don't know, a 20-minute EVP session, and there were 14 EVPs in 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah, you got you got their attention. Uh, when you start doing things like that, you start getting their attention. Yeah, yeah. They start seeking you out because they want to, they know who to look for. Yep. Well, say in, in um, you know, going on from that, I kind of have this uh theory and I'm not I, I also kind of see it um you know in my third eye is that you know uh, anyone who has any kind of ability whether it's just clairvoyance or you know you're a psychic or you know anything like that or you're just sensitive that we kind of um glow like we have a a glow to us like a, a light right yeah and some you know say like you know mike he's got a very you know very strong ability so you know he'd be like super super bright um and then someone who might just be a little bit sensitive has a light but it's a lot dimmer and that's kind of how i see it from the spirit's eyes it, yeah I can't explain it. It's, um, and so they just know who it's she like goes to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they just, I don't know, they just know who to go to. And, and I don't know if, if you've experienced this uh, during investigations, but, um, you know, like if you're the one hearing, like, disembodied voices and things like that and no one else is hearing them, yeah. I think that, you know, spirits choose who they want to communicate with. Definitely. Um, as Def well. Oh, so, exactly. Because yeah. I'll have a spirit, like, say something to me, and it will be loud, and I'll just be like, oh, come on, like, you, you guys must, like, you heard that, right? And they're just like, no. And I'm like, <laughs> how could you not hear that? It was so loud. But, I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I'm like, you hear that? They're like, no. What was it? Yeah. Like Jen, Jen and Adam say to me, like, why do you even ask us? <laughs> and it's just a, you know, natural reaction, you know, like, oh my God, like, what the hell was that? And they're like, didn't hear anything. <laughs> right. Ooh. I'd be lucky to hear anything. Most things don't ever, well, get too, too close. And most of the time they can't hear anything they're saying anyway. Um, unless they say it out loud for everybody to hear, uh, but you psychics have it so lucky. 
<laughs> uh, I tell you what, the creepiest one that I've had is, um, you know, when Sean and I, there's a town called York. Um, it's a couple of hours out of Perth. And the entire town is haunted. Like, you know, and there's a lot of ties to land and the Aboriginals and things like that. And, you know, Sean and I were going to be, you know, investigating all night. So we thought, oh, we'll just, you know, lay down for an hour and kind of recharge and stuff like that. And I laid down and I've got, you know, my left ear on the pillow. And in that left ear, I hear, hey, baby. And I sat up so quick and was like, what the hell? And Sean said, what? And I'm like, did you not hear that? And she said, no. And, but the way the spirit said it, it was so creepy, like, hey, baby. And it was so loud. And I'm like, how is that in my left ear? Like when I'm actually laying on that ear. So I kept questioning myself, like, am I just like going crazy? Am I hearing things? Am I like, what is going on? (laughs) All right. Um, Oh, you can say something, Josh? Yeah. I was going to say, I had a, none quite similar to that, but we were taking this tour through this haunted house. Um, you guys might've heard of it. It was on, it's been on a couple of TV shows. It's called Asylum 49. And we were going through this place and there was this room called the Egyptian room. They were having some paranormal activity in there. But on this tour, we were going through, I'm the last person out of this door as we're walking out. And there's this little cubby hole to my, to my right, probably where someone would stand and like dare people during the haunted, when it was on, you know, during the haunted house dives. But I get this guy that comes into my right ear and you can kind of almost feel, feel the breath on your ear. He's like, see you soon. <laughs> it's like, well, that's creepy. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, when I die, I, I've got a list. Okay, like, well, you're gonna a, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I have like you know um, you know friends of mine you know who are also investigators and it's like okay so if you die and I'm still investigating make sure you come to wherever I am and uh, you know we can just you know get some really good <laughs> footage because <laughs> 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 it'd be great to just you know sit down pull up a chair, have a cup of tea. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Keeper's been quiet. Let's have Keeper go. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just, let's, uh, I'm still a rookie. I'm still a rookie to all this. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'd probably say, i probably definitely do the Demon Theater. Theater is on the top of the list for sure. A lot of things were going on that n- both nights. It was just left and right, left and right. It was what uh, the investigator who was there who gave us the opportunity to do it. He was like, there's multiple portals here, there, all of this. And and it was just it was just heavy that whole night. Uh, we we did the full microphonics kind of deal, put the headphones on, covered the eyes and the deal. But they took it the next thing next level they tied me to the chair left me for a good hour and with the walkie talkie they were outside in my car and just talking and it was just like left and right left and right just talking listening to him talk and i just felt them all it just dark darkness everything just everybody who was there the entities the paranormal demons everything was just there talking and to to put it on the other level too my buddy behind behind me um no words he was doing the same thing nothing so they were just channeling through me the whole night um and then the following night we went to a brothel an abandoned brothel i had the opportunity to um actually meet one of the uh behind the scenes kind of guy uh, from the Ghost Adventures, he was lying on the cameraman. He, he owned this brothel. Oh. 
and we had the opportunity to do it. Same thing. A lot of the dark entities there, stuff going on. And, but one thing that night, early that morning, we're packing up. There's chit chatting in here. And all you hear is the women's heels on top, just walking their rounds, getting ready for the day and stuff. And we're like, we're like, what the hell is going on? And you can hear actual ch- them talking like throughout the whole thing. And I'm like, what the hell? What the heck is going on? It's cool. But I freaked out. I mean, so with, with the footsteps and, and, you know, like hearing the heels, um, debunking channels have really kind of started taking off on, on YouTube. And, um, you know, one of them has, has talked about, you know, like if, if a ghost isn't like human, like anymore, they're not corporeal, then, you know, and, and investigators put it in their episodes all the time. Footsteps. I'm hearing footsteps. Um, and stuff like that and and you know but how is how is that how does that happen and and how when they're not corporeal are they making sounds and i you know explain to one of them that it's no different to a disembodied voice it's disembodied bloody footsteps like <laughs> yeah <laughs> just yeah definitely is you know what's uh been uh, i guess a intense experience or really profound experience that you uh might have dealt with least recently <laughs> over your time as an investigator oh me <laughs> oh um as an investigator uh probably uh was a dark entity um at a cemetery um that you know isn't it's local, uh, but, you know, we captured uh, the first time, uh, the very first investigation that we, we actually ever filmed, we caught um, this flying um, thing, like, go straight, you know, towards the camera. And when you pause the image, it looks like uh, almost a dark angel but the the head looks like uh you know a kkk like type hood it's 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 really bizarre um it was also very frustrating because everyone kept saying oh no that's just her breath and it's it's definitely not my breath because i mean this thing moves at like supersonic speed uh but yeah, we always, every single time we, we went up there to investigate, we, you know, we'd always like experience just, you know, there was a lot of chatter, but then, you know, this negative energy was coming through all the time. And, you know, I would get like a steering kind of burning, stabbing pain, um, you know, just below my rib cage and, and all of that. And, and when I had, um, you know, uh, Jane over here, uh, I took her up there and we, we went in the gate and I mean, this cemetery, you know, ha- has got gum trees all around the edges and it has a couple within the actual cemetery itself, but it, you know, it, it is pitch, pitch black. Um, it's just got this darkness over it. It it was very odd. Um, and you know, I, we kind of just thought, okay, it's just the area, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, it, even when it was a full moon, it was still just pitch black. And so we're walking into the cemetery. We've only just started to like, turn our gear on like and start filming and we have um these thundering because we're on the you know central uh pathway we had these thundering like um foot like footsteps like running like doosh 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 towards us you know like uh, 
it just sounded like, uh, you know, Clyde style horses, um, they got the really big feet, right? It, it, it was, it sounded bigger, heavier than that. And I just remember Jane like yelling out, grabbing onto me because it all happened so, so fast. And, but you can hear this like whoosh. So it's like douche, 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 whoosh. And then That's right. it's, and then it's gone, right? And, you know, Jane actually like bruised me. She grabbed me that hard. <laughs> and um yeah it took us a little second to process what had just happened and you know I thought to myself is this because you know she hasn't been before and you know this energy is just trying to scare our type thing um but uh we both just had this feeling of dread and that's probably the only time um, I've decided that, okay, I don't think we should yeah. hang around. Uh, so we ended up leaving and at the very, uh, we, we waited a couple of weeks before we went back and we made sure we put up like triple protection, but we, we hadn't communicated to one another what kind of protection we were doing or um the strength at which we were doing it and you know we get up there same time and night, uh and you know we pull up we turn the car lights off and the cemetery's light like you can actually see the headstones and I said to her something's different something's not right and she was you know picking up the same thing and then uh because I have uh Archangel Michael as like he's my main guide and um so we go into the cemetery and I said to her like okay something is like different it's very quiet um and then we kind of started talking about okay is it is it just waiting to pounce <laughs> or, you know, have, has our protection? And that's when we started discussing what protection we put up over ourselves. And we'd done the same thing. We'd, you know, done it threefold. Um, we ended up getting absolutely nothing. And so I think like our protection just basically <laughs> wiped out <laughs> all spirits communicating with us. Um, and I said to her, this is bizarre because I've come up here and investigated the cemetery so many bloody times and have always had communication and it was just dead, dead as a door now. And then, you know, as we're kind of like, you know about to call it type thing um I just like get this image of of Michael standing up the back corner of this cemetery and like he was huge and he he was basically standing guard um and across the road is like a big uh like national forest and I'd kept like sensing that it you know this negative thing was over there and yeah so he Michael was actually keeping this energy from coming coming back in but that's probably the only time I've been freaked out um and I, and I don't think I would have freaked out to that degree if Jane hadn't have screamed and, like, bolted back into me. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was a pretty significant experience. Janish, uh, what's been your profound experience or at least most intense that you've dealt with lately? Or uh, over your wow. investigator? Yeah, that's... When it's, it's, there's a couple. There's a couple. <laughs> um, so... 
we've investigated for the last four years. We didn't do it this year, but for four years, we investigated the same prison up in Montana. It's the old Montana State Prison in Deer Lodge, Montana. And we were up there investigating. And you do a 12-hour investigation. So you get the whole building from 7, a, from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. now. And you just stay there. You stay in there. You're locked in. They leave you alone. You just go. We were over in Mactone Security. This is two years ago. And we, I brought out a Tibetan steam bowl. Oof. And there's a negative energy that hangs out in Mactone Security, along with all the other human negative energies that are there, right? And so I took this bowl out. And I'm like, I'm going to play a song for you. And as soon as I started playing, I felt all of the despair and angst and anguish was all thrust upon me at one moment. It was super overwhelming. Um, I'm starting, you know, starting to well up and starting to tear up as I'm playing this bowl. And I can see as I'm playing, there's a second hand over the top of my hand as I'm playing. And so this ended up actually being one of my Native American spirit guides that was uh, assisting me in this. What was neat is I didn't play very long, maybe 30, 40. But when I stopped playing, you heard this mocking echo of the bowl being played from the negative entity. And so it's kind of like mocking back at it. And so that's probably the most like emotional I've ever been during an investigation. I mean, usually I'm pretty, pretty even skilled on that. But the scariest moment I've ever had is unexplainable. To be honest, uh, we were in this old mining town called Eureka. It's uh, Eureka, Utah. Uh, the, it, it still exists. I mean, it, there's some people that live there. It's very small now, but we were in this old abandoned bank building, and I'm in the back of the I'm in the back of the building, and we were on a, a public investigation with another paranormal group, and they're like, they're like, uh, you know, sometimes there's a spirit that hangs out in this closet, and so she opened the door. And immediately I felt like something rushed out at, and I'm sitting up against this wall and I'm not a small guy, six foot one. And I wanted to crawl back through the wall. And that's how like terrified I was of, I mean, of nothing that you can see. Right. Yeah. And they all laughed and my wife was sitting there and I'm like, Hey, can you close the door? And once she closed the door, that's when I could actually move in the, the fear went away. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's not this, you know, I've been touched. I've, you know, that stuff doesn't bother me. I've seen spirits. That stuff doesn't bother me. But it was something like that, that that's the most terrifying moment I've ever had. And it's hard to explain just it's like nothing really happened. Yeah. Oh. It, it sounds similar to mine, where it, it's just this in, in, invisible force, like charging yeah. at you. And, and just, <laughs> yeah, just flight or flight moment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've wanted to go back and investigate, but the old owner has sold that whole row of buildings. And now there's like a, a secondhand like typewriter store in there. And they're not really open. And they're not open to having investigators come in. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> well, that's a shame. Yeah. Mike, I know I've probably heard it about a thousand times, but I guess what would be your profound or <laughs> scary moments? Uh, as you know, I've been uh, privy or participated in a couple of exorcisms. Um, almost the same as what you guys are saying. But on a very large scale to, to see what full possession will do to somebody will really put you on your heels. You know what I mean? That's, that's the scariest moment I had is when you're, you're facing somebody that's a female and you're getting, you know, grown men, uh, Latin words coming out of their mouth and they don't even know Latin. So like, that was the the scariest moment for me was being part of the exorcism and actually feeling and and helping get through that emotional state of an exorcism 
it, it was very overwhelming um, and uh, really put me in my place. You know what I mean? If, if that makes sense, made me more humble about what I do. Um, and, and I always tell people to protect themselves because I've seen that. I've seen that scary part of what can happen if you give them control. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. I think that's the one thing people forget too, is that we still have control. That it's yeah. it, Those types of things are in are invitation. You have to let them play. And if you don't let them play, they're not going to play if play. Right. Cool. Right. They just give you consistent shit since, you know, until you turn in or they uh, basically just move on. Or unless they have some kind of reason to be there or want you know, this to be man- there. The same night you, you were talking about footsteps. Now, this is a very, so during the exorcism, it sounded like a horse or, you know, hooves on wood. And it was under the floor and you can feel it like the horse was running upside down across the oh. floor. So that, you know what I mean? That, that, and that, so that's why I'm saying that was one of my scariest moments to actually see and hear and experience that moment of, you know, spiritual warfare where you really, Hey, you're, you're, you're small in the totem pole. You're very insignificant compared, you know what I mean? So be grateful that you can call on who you can call on. And, you know, that's, and it was a good eye opener. So when you were doing the exorcism, sorry, Isaac, um, was that, um, did you see, like, did, did the female like change? Like, um, on one of the videos, um, and unfortunately I don't have access to the videos anymore, um, for obvious reasons, you know what I mean? Um, but, um, it it was almost like her face contorted. So like you're looking at physical face and turns and starts screaming and goes to look at you and in that instant of hey it like the face just don't look right you know what i mean the contorted like Ooh. what i call the death face Ooh. you know you see that you know when they allow you to see what they look like now like their death the you know the rotten part um i don't know if you've ever experienced that yet um but that's the, yeah, that's the scariest moment I ever had. And that was uh, straight on. That was a succubus. So that was a very interesting oh. ordeal. And and do you need their name when you're doing an exorcism? Do you need the I, demon's name? Or? Yeah, we, we ended up getting the name from it. Um, and that's, you, that, you know, that's when you really get a foothold and push them out. Um, and that was before Isaac was even part of, uh, you know, going to the exorcisms and stuff with us. Um, he didn't get to experience that. Uh, it'd be a little easier with him around with some of the things he does. Um, but it, it was it, it was a scary moment. You know what I mean? Oh. Yet. Experience it yet. In our line of work, there's always going to be an opportunity to do that. So we'll find yeah. out how I stand up against them, or at least in that situation. But um, I guess he's so eager. You're, you're so eager, but I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is daunting. I'll give you that. I'm always up for a challenge. That's what I was saying. Like, uh, that's, it's, it's that warrior uh, sense of uh, mind. It's like I want the fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. just gonna say Isaac's about to say like let me at it or yeah, let yeah, me at it, but... let me at it. <laughs> yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess one of the other things I wanted to talk about amongst investigators. Uh now I know we always have our favorite gear, things we like to use more than anything, whether it be an app or um a piece of equipment that we like particularly to go to the most. But what is something a technique used with that said gear or even a future invention or contraption you came up with your own or a technique that you come up with your own that's specific that you've seen helps the most with communicating. Josh. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we, we use, I mean, we use dowsing rods a lot, but that's not the same. Uh, we use, we found very good use of yes, what we have found. Um, cause we've gotten all sorts of manner of words coming out that, you know, aren't going to be part of the FCC channel. So we use, when we do the SD's method, we use the SD seven spirit box is what we use. And so, you know, you know, we're not relying on a, a word bank or anything like that, but we've had, we sat down to one place and the first thing that came out was, uh, the F word. And it's like, yep, that Ooh. is not something that's going to be a part of normal radio product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that, that has always been fun. Uh, we've done it in, uh, we did it in death row. We've done it in other places. Uh, and, and it's always, it's worked out very well for us. Um, the funnest one that we had though, I got to tell you, we did, uh, we were in an old cement factory and it was at the end of the night and we weren't really getting a whole lot of anything. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start speaking Spanish. And let me tell you, my Spanish is like four sentences long. <laughs> but as soon as we did that, we started getting Spanish responses. Full Spanish sentences back. Wow. And I was like, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard a lot of languages. Uh, voodoo, voodoo, um, Native American, uh, Spanish. French, German. Um, I reckon it's just where we live at. It's like a melting pot here of all the languages. But I've heard a lot yeah. of investigations. Oh. You had any new techniques you've been using or at least uh, new devices you might have added to your repertoire of uh, investigation gear? Who? Me? Yeah, hey. you, Peter. <laughs> uh, well, so I mean, we've we've got a lot of um, little experiments that that we're trying. Uh, you know, one is like, you know, with the Ouija board, um, but I will not touch it. I won't yeah. even let him. <laughs> with yeah. Um, but. Uh, you know, I love um, doing, you know, EVP sessions. Um, we did one, uh, we went to an abandoned hospital on Friday night and uh, the uh, we... My favorite. Yeah, we, we, we did one and then the we didn't really get any EVPs and, and our, it, it didn't even pick up, like, everyone's questions. It was... Both recorders were kind of like messed with. Uh, and then so we, you know, did a second one. And, yeah, when I, I've basically just said, okay, recorder one down and then, all right, recorder two. And then you hear this male voice come through and say, you've got to be joking. <laughs> like I played it like a few times and it's like, you got to be joking. Like, as in, we're doing this again, really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. But, yeah, I love doing, yeah, the Estes method as well. Uh, Keeps, um, I know you said you're getting your back into it, but whether at the time when you were investigating or urban exploring, was there a particular technique you used with the camera to capture stuff or did you use special lenses or uh, any other techniques that you think you might have used differently from most people? Honestly, it's almost more of the fact like when I explored and stuff doing all that, I, I take my camera and I'm just there to photographs because mostly I'm contracted out for private companies, private people and stuff to take photos for at a different band of buildings. But with, uh, when I was working with Colin and stuff or the paranormal files for his show and all, um, we mostly just went in with his cameras and that was it. We didn't really bring all this equipment with us. We just went with an open mind, 
with our camera and that was it. We just went with flow. Like, yeah, we had some pot, you know, we had some equipment, but not a lot. It was just more of the fact, hands on ears, listening to what we can hear and whatever we, the camera picked up, that was it. That was what it picked up. That's interesting. I know, I don't know what Mike's been cooking up without me, but um, I guess Mike, you want to talk about to, I guess, everyone, because I mean, I already know, but I mean, everyone else might be listening stuff like that. The, 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 the technique that you, we seem to be, seems to work the best for us. Um, I don't know. Every situation is a little different though. Yeah. But usually in, uh, you know, our, our biggest weapon that we have in our arsenal, um, as paranormal investigators, um, is the body, the human body is actually feeling that is, that is my biggest tool is me, um, being able to sense point direct guide. Um, and then that's usually when somebody gets pictures of something or video side, you know, EVPs. Um, I used to love taking photographs, but I can't no more. Um, I don't know if anybody's got that problem, but every time I do something shows up in the photograph. Um, so a lot of my photographs look like Peter was saying that it was smoke in front of my picture. And, but if you look closely, you can see people and you know what I mean? It's like, a, they're always right there in front of me trying to get my attention. So I don't use oh. the camera as much. I use more mm -hmm. feel or, you know, my, my gifts, my intuition. Um, and then, of course, you know, SD's master do, of course, um, very good method for you guys asking questions and getting returns, responses. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the things we do like that, though, Isaac, are that's for the other people. We could almost do what we do without tools <laughs> yeah. or equipment, you know what I mean? Um, but it is nice to be able to show other people other things. Um, and the same with the rim pods. Uh, I make them go off. So if I go sit beside a REM pod, it's going to glow until Isaac actually makes it shut off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it, I'm one of those people that those, the REM pod react to me very, um, yeah, it's just weird. So they don't That's work. Very well around me. <laughs> but anyway, the energy that I'm taking away or they, they move because of me. Um, one of the, I guess, one of my final questions, because we're going on a, a while here. I know I said an hour, but I, I'm going to rephrase that from now on every time we do these paranormal roundtables, just because we all have great perspectives and and, and hearing everyone and mm -hmm. different things like that. But I guess one of the final questions I want to ask is, yeah, we already, are, uh, me and Mike, I'm about, Mike probably have his own perspective, but um, what is your goal as a paranormal investigator, or at least as someone in the paranormal what is it you want to discover or what is it you want to do with the paranormal let's start with peter okay um the may uh my goal is to help the living and the dead um and i i get asked a lot like oh how much do you charge I don't charge anything. Like nope. the reason I'm I'm doing paranormal and and going and and helping families who who are dealing, you know, with activity of any kind or you know spirits. I just want to be able to contribute to the field, um, you know, and and that's another reason why you know we're you know, starting to do more uh, experimental type um, investigations because, you know, I'd like to someday, you know, even, you know, write a book or something like that to, you know, like put out there, I suppose. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 a seesaw in our field because you know like you said in the beginning um Isaac you know there's those clout chasers and you know they're just in it for the money and the fame and, and so everything's <laughs> fake and bullshit and and it, it makes me so frustrated and angry um so 
you know, it's it's great knowing that there's so many other, um, you know, authentic investigators out there around the entire world who, uh, you know, legitimately trying to to just contribute and help um, people. I, I I don't agree with people charging. Um, I think, yeah, I, I just don't think it's the right thing to do. Um, so, yeah. Most give it a thumbs up, yeah. And the thing that's funny mm-hmm. is that with, with uh, our skills, with our, me and Mike's team's skill of what we do, what we can provide, you think we would be able to charge anything we want because – it's almost a guarantee what we do is going to happen because we of course had experience and we have testimonial people we've helped out with it before and you know stuff like that but i think it was mike you were telling me that it, it's that if you start charging people for your gift to use it uh to help people that you start losing it yes yeah you, you start putting negativity into the system um it, you know you're t- you're trying it's the personal personal gain rule um oh. you, know, the, you, you don't we i don't use my gifts for personal gain so i'm not going to give you lotto ticket numbers or you know what i mean it's not like that it's not how the system works so it you know what i mean it, it's it, it's just the way that it is you know what i mean yeah uh josh what's your uh yeah so you know we started out you know, really trying to just document any paranormal experiences that we had, right? Trying to bring light to what is out there. But we've really switched lately into, you know, trying to tell the stories of those who have passed on. Like, you have these spirits that are here, right? That they were once alive. They have a story. They had a life. You know, try to get as much as you can to understand, you know, what life like or what they want to tell people uh, there's lots of you know stories just like we're sitting around that you know talking about our stories right these spirits have stories well and it kind of came to me uh we were at one of the titanic museum uh, we were in branson missouri at the titanic museum and they have this when you walk in there they give you a ticket and the ticket has a name of an individual and that is who you get to be while you're on the Titanic. And then at the very end, there's a wall, right? Of every ticketed individual on the Titanic. And you get to figure out if you live or die. Ooh, it's brutal, right? It's absolutely brutal. But you start looking at this wall, right? And there's thousands of names on this wall. And you're like, each one of these people had a story. You know, they had, they had something that happened to them in life. And it's like, why can't we tell their stories to the rest of the people because there's stuff to learn from what they've experienced in life. And so that's really what we try to do, you know, as much as possible. It's tough, right? Because when you can speak in small sentences or, you know, you get an EVP of one or two words, sometimes it's really tough to get some of that full story out. But we try the best we can to bring as much of that out to, to people as possible. It's yeah. almost like putting together a puzzle. Um, I exactly. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah. And the more you go back to a location, the more you learn about, you know, the different spirits and, and you, you can start kind of piecing it together into to what you think, you know, has gone on and stuff. Well, like exactly. A- like, you really have to go back more than once. Like you have to hit oh. places several times to really get a full understanding of stuff yeah like an onion you got to peel back the layers yeah exactly keeps uh i know you you were saying before that you got out of it and you're getting your way back in but now that you get back in what would you say is your goal to uh be studying the paranormal investigating altogether yeah um for one I want to say I, I've been un, at ease at this whole time for whatever y'all did earlier. So I wanted to apologize, see if I was like out of it. I was spacing out for a minute here and there throughout the whole podcast. So I do want to apologize to that. But I mean, 
throughout prior prior time because of my name, Kipro Seki, associating with the paranormal files, I have been contacted by more of the clout chasing, more of the uh, more of those kind of people. I've had the opportunity to be able to do a full on um, series, paranormal series on um, Amazon and Apple, but that was fully scripted out and I completely denied that. <laughs> and they're like, they asked me why. And I was like, I, you, I work with these people. This is what we do. We hands on, we don't follow any scripts. We tell the truth, how I've been told I am keeper of the truth. I speak the truth. I do what I do. Um, so without this whole time, it's like now this next round, it's how I call it. This next chapter of keeper of the second for exploring and doing the paranormal is speaking the truth. And that's, that's what I want to do is speak the truth through my work, through the paranormal exploring so yeah <laughs> awesome well, i mean you like you, you start you know like uh you know the people out there who are doing it and and following the script or um not doing it for the right reasons um yeah. staging the evidence things like that mm -hmm. you know I've, like I've... your lies catch up to you and Mm -hmm. Every single time you're asked, you know, what happens during an investigation, yeah. the story changes. Um, it, it does. It definitely does. So, it's, and to me, it's, it's like you, you've got to stay yourself. Like I just mm -hmm. am and that's just how I, you know, oh, yeah. film um, and that's that, you know. There's sure. no putting on those play. certain videos. Mm -hmm. On those certain videos, you could see I'm at unease because of I have to lie. I have to be a different character. I have to be a different me. Where you can see when I'm with Colin and stuff, I'm more relaxed. I'm more okay. This is you know, boom. We got evidence. Keep going. Let's keep rolling it. Let's keep going it. And it's like with these cloud chasers and all. I'm more of like. I, I can't be myself. I can't, I have to follow their script. I have to do all this. You know, I've, I've met those people and it's, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's, I've seen both worlds. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's perfect. That's a great answer. Um, but I look forward to seeing what you do in the future. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I might go going back to Kansas. Uh, a little this year, so I they're they're calling my name out. So you gotta revisit some old friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do appreciate everybody coming on with their different perspectives, um, and different inputs and information. This has been a good paranormal roundtable episode one. Because there will be two more if you guys look forward to those. Um, but I do appreciate you guys coming on. And uh, real quick, where can everybody find you, Peta? Uh, it's Ethereal Sisters Paranormal on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> same, same everywhere. Uh, Josh. Yeah. Um, we have a couple different names. I mean, hashtags, yes, you can say. So like on Twitter, we are, we are CPR Paranormal. On Facebook, we are Cold Spot Paranormal Research. And then on Instagram, we're at full spot underscore paranormal underscore. All right. And uh, Keeper, you got everybody, where everybody finds you? Uh, most, I'm mostly on Instagram now, Keeper the Second. I, yeah, that's that's where mostly I post everything. But I'm starting to slowly get back into the video. So mostly you'll be at the same thing, Keeper the Second on uh, YouTube. Awesome. And Mike, where can everybody find you? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh no uh shadow walker paranormal um on instagram uh do we have the other ones yet snapchat and all that yet no maybe i would like megan get started with that but other also um 
when it comes to paranormal questions with uh, Shadow Walker Paranormal, Hidden the Shadows podcast on Instagram is also a great place to get, communicate with us as well. Um, like I said, do appreciate you guys coming on. Um, for everyone listening, uh, you can uh, catch uh, Hidden Shadows podcast, uh, Hidden Shadow podcast, like I said, on Instagram, Hidden the Shah 6 on Twitter, uh, Hidden in the Podcast 2 on TikTok, or links to all of social media and all ways you can listen to us at Hidden Shadows podcast.com. Um, yeah, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you, Valerie. All right. And as appreciate always, it. catch your widows in the next one. I'm